Thank you. You in the house of God. Yeah. Tell your neighbor left, right, front, and back. Yeah. I'm glad today. Yeah. Uh, Sister Li Ling, uh, I, I thought of calling her pastor uh, so many years already, uh, and she loved the people. And uh, yeah, see, Pastor Lazarus, uh, we are looking for uh, you, pastor or uh, yeah, pa- leader. Just happened today, I got four of them here. Right, Jordan, can you please rise? Jordan, yeah. And Li Ting, she's a pianist and musician. And uh, uh, Sister Catherine, she comes from Bintulu. Yeah, coming down uh, yeah, to KL and to serve. Miri, yeah, Miri, yes. Yeah, so uh, we thank God. It seems like the Lord is uh, bringing young people uh, for me to disciple. And uh, they are all very excellent people. So, Liling, can you choose any one of them? <laughs> you must convince them, huh? All right, no. Okay, uh, so we thank God. Uh, yeah, uh, some of them really, they are... With the servant heart, they are so young, yeah, like Jordan, actually very young. He has already given his life to uh, minister, right? And of course, they go through a lot of challenges. So, but we treasure all the young people here. Amen. And uh, yeah, as what I am used to minister in the area of emotion healing and spiritual deliverance. Wow, I saw that so many of them so talented, but the hearts are very broken. <laughs> So, yeah, it's all our fault. Yeah, as I was ministering to them uh, during the pandemic, I found out the word of God is so true. Malachi says, yeah, in chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, he will send the spirit of Elijah to bring the hearts, to turn the hearts of the father back to the children. And then from the children back to the father. So it is the father and mother, right, that needs, first of all, to acknowledge Okay, they need prayer, they need help. And we make a mistake as a church. You got any children, you know, uh, need to be disciplined or taught, whatever, bring them to Sunday school. You know, like the gout and everything. You, know, you go and, you know, earn your money and bring tithes and offering. <laughs> it's bad. Actually, I mean, we have that attitude. We will help you to settle your children's problem. No! Parents are the one. I just felt there are so many of them very broken. Children lock themselves in the room, depressed. They get upset with the church and say, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. I don't want to go to church. You know, they even are so rude in their language uh, to their parents. And their parents are in the church, they are leaders. Okay, it's not only one or two. I've seen them, many of them. So the younger generation, yeah, they have all these emotional problems. It's because, you know, we didn't nurture them. Right? Tell your neighbor, yeah, we need to nurture okay, our young people. Amen. They need that father's love and mother's love. Right? Even the Bible, Paul, yeah, say, you know, you have many thousand of instructors. We don't even have one thousand people here. Of course it's exaggerating. You say you have thousands of instructors. Yeah, right. Hokkien Nangong. Right? I mean, I tell you, you know, you must do this, do this, that is instructor, right? Yeah, we go for driving, you know, tests out, we're very scared of the instructor because he will scold you, uh, that kind of things, right? So, uh, in the church, it's supposed to have the Father's love. Can you say it together? Father's love, amen. This is what the young people want, right? And then we were saying, hey, where is the, I also don't know what category is that, they say the, the, the what, Z, Z generation and the millennium, you know, where are they now, you know, why they don't come to church and so on. Yeah, so they want to be connected, yeah? so they need that uh, personal touch. And I felt it's time for us to uh, restore. Yeah? The church need to, yeah, the Lord is shaking the heaven and the earth, and the Lord is also uh, shaking his church. All right, so after the pandemic, the church is going through a transition, okay? And uh, when we thank God that as we come and pray together during the pandemic, you know, the Lord actually has break through a lot of denomination differences and law. So 
during the pandemic, we started the Malaysia Fire War. Malaysia United Fire War. Can you say it together? Malaysia United Fire War, MUFW, right? It's actually across yeah, uh, the denomination. I begin to meet with uh, intercessors or watchmen from the Methodist Church, right? They, they are, because they know Malaysia need prayer. Tell your neighbor, Malaysia need prayer and healing. All right, so this is a very crucial time, right? As we pray, we are seeing and experiencing God uh, is doing miracle here in our land. Okay, so the Lord actually kept us on our toe. Yeah, a lot of things that happen, you know. Wow, we say we must pray, we must pray. So we thank God, God's people humble themselves and pray and seek His way. In the prayer meeting, like we are doing, you know, seeking the face of God, asking Him, hearing Him of His heartbeats, and we pray according to His will at that time, okay, at that moment for that play. So same thing with Saramban. God has a plan and purpose, you know, and destiny for Saramban. Tell your neighbor, God has a plan, a purpose, and destiny for Saramban. Right? Don't give up hope. Hallelujah. So, you know, I was talking to the pastors, you know, over Zoom because we pray together and especially the East Coast. Okay? Yeah. Uh, tell your neighbor, pray more for East Coast. <laughs> East Coast really need, yeah. We were there, you know, uh, doing the work and wow, we felt the intimidation of the spiritual atmosphere. Alright? Yeah. Uh, and, and the pastors there are all very tired. Yeah, I have one young pastor burnt out, you know. Yeah, and uh, they constantly face a lot of challenges, right? When we get ask them to come together for prayer, they say, very difficult, pastor. The churches and pastors, very difficult to come together <laughs> because some of them actually break up from us, you know. So that kind of, uh, yeah, history, you know. Wow, and some of them say they themselves are very tired and very hurt. So they say, Pastor, pray for us. Lah. We are looking for successor. <laughs> uh, so the KL Pastor will say, We also look for a successor. Ah. <laughs> so he's trying to tell them that we all face the same challenges. All right? So I say, You're very important. You must pray for the healing of your soul. Okay? Tell your neighbor, Healing of our soul. Because it's very interesting. When I pray for the father and mother, they have their own disappointment, hurts and pain. When they are healed, very interesting. Their children uh, will start coming up from the room, you know, talking to them. Right? They are able to speak peaceably. Right? I say, hey, I didn't even pray for the son. Right? But now he said, stuck in, starting to coming out and relating to them and start coming back to church and involved in evangelism and worship. Let's give Jesus a clap. Amen. So, Father and mother, we have many father and mother here. You are the answer. Yeah, for the next generation. Do you know we actually yeah, we we actually cause a lot of destruction upon their life because they don't have your love and care when they are in the childhood. We throw to them what? iPad, the handphone. So they are the one who are baby be, be, babysit by all this thing. Right? Therefore they have problem in communication. The problem in communication because they always look at the computer and, uh, and also the handphone, right? It, we, we need to go back again, you know, seek, search your heart. Don't come and tell the pastor, pastor, pray for my son or daughter. Don't do that first. Ask them, pastor, pray for us. We need to be healed and be corrected, aligned back to the will and purpose of God then you can cross over together yeah, to the other side. Uh, this is what uh, my title, Crossover. So as I was preparing for this uh, Joshua chapter, you know, 1, 2, and 3, you know, yeah, the words crossover came to me. So I was about to go to minister a church in Ampang, so I need to take a train from Kepong, okay, and... Uh, Go to TRX, you know where is TRX, the shopping mall, right? So I went in there to do the exchange. So I took lunch, you know, there. And as I was leaving, 
you know, coming down the escalator, I saw this, I saw this, uh, yeah, boutique shop, uh, cross over. <laughs> I said, we, they also use this word. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, we just want to understand, uh, uh, at that time and moment, uh, Joshua is faced with this challenge to cross over to the River Jordan. It's something new and challenging because it's at the uh, season of the river flooding and the Lord asked them to cross over. Okay, so you might be facing today something in your life. You know you need to have a breakthrough. You need to cross over. Right? Tell a neighbor, you need to cross over. Soon, I was thinking, I felt God is saying to all of us that, you know, no matter how old and how young you are, even you have retired, you still are going to be crossing over. Amen. No, no one will leave behind. Correct or not? So it's the Lord asked Joshua to bring everyone to cross over. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful uh, morning where we get together. We are so amazed, O oh Lord, of your divine appointment for all of us here. Yes, O oh Lord. Father, we, you know the time and season. And as long as we love you and we seek your face, O oh Lord, Yes, Lord, in every season of our life, O oh Father God, you will cause us to bear fruits. I'm just saying, the Lord is saying to us, hallelujah, that today, no matter who you are and what you have gone through, yeah, in this time and season, we are like a tree planted by the river of life, hallelujah, that will bear forth fruits in every season, in every season, even if it's in springtime, yeah, the Lord will cause you to bear fruits. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Father, we just want to taste of your goodness and your mercy as we gather here in life assembly. Lord, in Saramban, Father, you do a wonderful and miraculous work here in every one of our life here, Father God, that we are able to cross over every river, every challenges, every season, even the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you say to your people, yes, be bold and be strong. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. All the days of your life. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you, Father. We just only be strong and very courageous. Hallelujah. And that to meditate on your words day and night. Hallelujah. So, Lord, today we put on the whole armor of God. Let's do that together. Put on the helmet of salvation. Yeah. And then the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. And the belt of truth. Amen. Yeah. Can we stand together and do this? All right. And the shoe of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Today I'm very sender. I forgot. I went to Jordan's car. And I just come here with my sandal. <laughs> all right. And then, all right, so remember, it's not Nike, nothing, yeah, but the shoe of the preparation of the gospel of peace. And uh, take up your left hand, the shoe of faith. Amen. Yeah, we are faith spiritual battle. But with this faith, amen, hallelujah, we quench every fiery darts of the enemy that come against us, our marriage, our family, and our church and our community and our nation and the last the most powerful weapons the word of god the sword of the spirit yeah tell your neighbor i got the sword of the spirit yeah but don't fight each other okay yeah and to pull down every stronghold of the enemy in our life amen as the lord cleanses to cross over amen and then we help each other to pull down the stronghold and also Hallelujah, our community we are pull down the stronghold and eventually we see transformation come to our nation. You give Jesus a clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Wow, very good student. I ask my student in the Zoom, I always do that. Yeah. So, Liling, I'm saying that we got three choices for you. <laughs> Joking. Yeah, but you have to convict. Uh, convince them. Huh? All right. So today, uh, actually, yeah, thank God. Uh, nowadays, I'm seeing uh, young people. They are, they are very uh, responsive. Yeah. So I even have young men, 
All right, so the Lord is actually, as we are praying, you know, and the uh, uh, father and mother getting more healthy, the young people will return back to God. Amen. And the young man, man, you know, young man went over to Singapore to study, <laughs> disappointed with the church, he left the church and went to Singapore to work because also the exchange is so good, right? But he's a very godly uh, yeah, uh, child of God. Yeah, but sometimes our young people can get you know, disappointed and so on. Eh? It's a journey of growing. Yeah? And also it's a journey of healing. Eh? Yeah. So, you know, he, 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 the Lord spoke to him. He cannot settle down in any church. Right? And he said, God, you know, why, why do you do this to me? <laughs> okay. So he thanked God, he earned, and then he paid every lo- housing loan, everything. And he said, yes, I'm coming back, Lord. So he came back to the church, you know, and uh, he starts serving full time. Very humble, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and they are at the prime of their, you know, age, uh, and they are giving their time. So I say, God, these are the signs that you are, you are able to do that. You are speaking to them. One person is a representation. They went away with disappointment. Or either the parents say, Malaysia, no hope. You better go out, you know, and then stay in another country and then later we'll join you. <laughs> uh, so, but now they are returning. I, I'm, I'm believing it, God, in that. Yeah. And so, we so praise the Lord. We, we worship in the church. He helped us to lead the worship and uh, in the prayer altar. So, you know, these are the crossing over. Amen. Crossing over. Okay. I don't know, I, 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 I just felt you know, the Lord me, want me to share some of these things. Two days ago, it was a 100 years uh, anniversary for what? Uh, the Malaysia and Singapore crossover. <laughs> the Lord just told, speak to me, you know. And uh, yeah, someone say, you know, prophetically, one day Malaysia and Singapore will become one. <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, emotion and feeling there. Yeah, because many of us, some of our children studying there, some of our loved ones are still there. Right, so it's a very close thing. And so this uh, crossing over is a challenge, definitely, even for you know uh, Joshua. Okay, yeah, and it's required us, right, to go through. Okay, uh, cleansing. Okay, yeah. So as he said, right. Uh, Arise, go over to Jordan. Okay, sorry, uh, next slide. Right. Arise and go over Jordan. Okay, and all the you and all his people to the land which I'm giving uh, to them, the children of Israel. So I believe uh, Malaysia, Christian. God loves Malaysia. Amen. And uh, the Lord has placed us you know, and rooted us here, all right? We are not going to leave, all right? I thank God I saw George and Pam, eh, sorry, uh, uh, Prima and, yeah. I know them, my younger day when I start serving the Lord, wow, I'm so happy, I say, I lost both of you. <laughs> you know, Green Pasture, we visited them uh, in the younger day, you know, yeah, when they first started. So I saw, you know, uh, yeah, they are still here, back to Suramban even, yeah. So, so these are people who are faithful. We know our root is here and the Lord is going to do something here. Amen. So, you know, the Lord asked Joshua, he said, Go, you and your people and the land, I am giving it to you. Right? I just felt it's not an easy task. It's not for anybody to just call everyone together. I believe Joshua has a record of faithfulness. Okay, tell a neighbor, you must be faithful. He has a record of faithfulness. He has been follow who? He has been, eh, there's another, I call him as Martin. Now he changed his name. Martin, what's your name now? Joshua. Joshua, okay. I also know him by those years. I went to Lahat Dato Station of Life. I met him there and the wife. I nearly forgot until that day I came, I saw him. Hey, you are alive. <laughs> and these are all the very faithful people. And so I thank God today is very significant. Huh? Yeah, and the young men are also very faithful. And so he has that record. People know you, people love you, people trust you because you are faithful. And that is very important. 
It's important example. So they also, hey, Pat, Lazarus, you still serving the Lord huh? in your younger day. Huh? You say, until now, I'm 60 years old this year. All right? So that was like 30 years old. But I, I, yeah, almost 40 years there. So he has the record. He is uh, trustworthy. He is faithful because he is Moses' ex- assistant for 40 years. Wow. How many of you work in a company 40 years? Please raise up your hand. 40 years. God or not? Hey, don't be shy. La. Huh? No. La. 40 years. God, la. wow, give her a clap. I hold uh, Wow. Only one, you know. I'm the other one. <laughs> yeah, 40 years in ministry. Hallelujah. And so, yeah, and uh, we, we saw because of that, that's the reason why he can lead everyone together. Because they trust us. Amen. So your heart must be, you know, dedicated no matter other people fail. Yeah? Sometimes momentary, you know, they're disappointed, they leave or whatever, but you stay on. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, he says that, you know, every place that you, your soul of your foot tread upon, I have given to you, yeah, as I said to Moses. Moses is also another very faithful one. And thank God, yeah, Joshua also is someone can be trusted because his commitment, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Okay, yeah. But I tell you, he's still human. I can see that actually in him, there's a lot of fear. Right? Tell a neighbor, do you have fear? Right? So today, we are actually dealing at different age, different age, okay? That, you know, we, 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 we face with different challenges. I have some people in my class, they say, Pastor, I think I'm under spiritual attack. You know, I say, why? They say, because now, like, I walk on the floor, I cannot feel the floor, you know? <laughs> I mean, walking in, on cloud, uh, right? It's why? Because... Yeah, I, I, because I overheard another uh, elders also have this symptom. It's actually, it could be the nerve uh, is not sensitive already. Yeah, it's a uh, health uh, age thing. Uh, yeah, so I say, no, la, please don't, you know, always blame the devil. <laughs> okay, so, so you need to do something. Uh, so when you face with all this issue, you begin to have fear, right or not? Yeah, so today I am speaking in the area of dealing with fear. fear. Uh, guys, in Christ transformation, I deal with one of the very important issues that uh, is actually affecting a lot of people. That is negative emotion. Okay, tell your neighbor negative emotion. Yeah, that is the thing that when you have it and you keep piling up, piling up, la, it makes you who you are. Right? You're sensitive. You are. Yeah. You you cannot sleep. You know. All these are not resolved. Huh? First, it's very important. But the second one today I want to share, I just felt this is uh, the time to share is uh, dealing with fear. Okay, so obviously, right, Joshua has fear, right? No wonder why God said to him, okay, in many places, okay, he, he said to him, uh, verse 6, uh, be strong, okay, and of good courage, right? Be strong and of good courage. Yeah, can this move? Okay, maybe you help me. Yeah, the second, uh, yeah, next one. To be strong and of good courage. Okay, so obviously he, ha- he's, he felt intimidated. He's taking over, yeah, Mo- Moses, right? And so, yeah, and for all these people shall divide and inherit the land that I swore to your father to give to them. And again, seven, yeah, only be strong and very courageous. All right? So, I just felt there's no other thing uh, but the Word of God is an antidote uh, of fear, against fear. Right? So, I believe very much as what the Lord is uh, speaking to Joshua. He said, the only thing be- beside your characters and your dedication, people trust you, but yet you still have fear. Right? And because God is going to do a new thing, tell our neighbor, God is going to do a new thing. Okay, at the very beginning, uh, uh, you know, before the lockdown, we, had, we received this word of prophecy. And many other countries, as we pray for the watchmen and intercessor and uh, those who are moving in prophetically, 
they, they receive this word, sir. They say, I have not seen, ear have not heard, the mind have not conceived. Uh, is what God is going to do, right, for those who love Him. Right? So we know His church, God's people, we love the Lord and we love this nation. Right? So, but we do not know what's going to happen. Wow! So all the disasters, you know, fire, wildfire, you know, uh, all the now getting more and more earthquake, you know, and also wars and rumors of war. All these are coming and escalating, right? So I tell you, right, many people after the pandemic, during the pandemic, and after even more, people going into depression and committing suicide, all right? And I felt as I minister to the people, right, almost th half of them, 300 hours of them are from Singapore. Okay. So they really have a lot of stress. Yeah? And some are from here, Malaysia. Right? You can see people's lives are full of fear. Yeah. Even they are so fearful, they, they, they have a lot of restriction in their life. Okay? So when, when you go through all this, uh, a lot of hurts and pain and things actually build out in your life, right? And some of them is already there, but some of them is actually building up on top of those who are earlier, all right? So if you don't deal with it, right, you are going to face even more challenging time ahead because more of this thing will come. But I tell you the good news, huh? all those who have the word of God, you have no fear. Amen. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but His words will remain forever. Right? I experienced that during the pandemic. How the Lord led me into meditating His word, uh, day and night. All right? It's hours. All right? So I will encourage you at the end of the day, I will, you know, uh, focus on this area and I want you, okay, and to encourage you to do this. So, the Lord told, you know, Joshua, that is the way. He said, this right, book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. This is not prosperous gospel. Tell a neighbor. This is not prosperous gospel. Meaning that, for nothing, you just become very rich. It's because you obey the word of God. It's because you meditate on the word of God. Okay? All of you got handphone? Alright? Yeah. So, handphone, very useful. Last time, is the dumb phone. Now, it's the smartphone, right? <laughs> but smartphone or dumb phone, you need to charge it. Tell your neighbor, you need to charge your phone. Yeah. Do you charge yourself with the word of God every day? Yeah. If you don't, you are empty. You are empty. Yes, you can function. You know the word, but you are not full and filled with His Holy Spirit and His word. So I just say, in the last day, there's no way. All of us every day will be full charged. Full charged. Fully charged. Amen. Hallelujah. Or else it cannot move. It cannot function. Right? And I find that it's so true today, you know, that, that whenever challenge comes to me or in ministry, the Lord will just open the way. Imagine one day I was on the Zoom and my niece helping me. I trust her. And she's, some student tell me, Pastor, he said we cannot enter already 100 people. I said, I thought this is 500 Zoom. So my niece says, sorry, uh, uncle, I forgot. <laughs> the, the account is the other person one, no? So I was getting a new account. So, wow, thank God a lady in the Zoom tell me, Pastor, my Zoom is 500 people. Come and use my, phone, my, my Zoom. Within five minutes, uh, all the students, 100 over and 200 all went over to her Zoom. Let's give Jesus a clap. I just felt so smooth. And the Lord is there. And I'm not panicked. I was at panic at, at one time. And then after that, you know, wow, I say, God, there must be something. Why do you allow this thing to happen? And why I start talking to this lady? And I say, I want to talk to her. And after the last lesson, I spoke to her. He said, Pastor, 
I have just diagnosed uh, with cancer. Wow, the Lord gave me the word. He said, do you know when you are facing this, you know, valley or this challenge or this mountain, but the Lord used you to provide us for the 500 Zoom. Do you know that God knows your problem? Oh, she was so encouraged. She finished the sixth lesson and I asked her, he said, Pastor, cannot describe so many miracles and so many breakthroughs. Oh, wow, I am so happy for her. Yeah, so, you know, she came and she read the word of God. She deal with her hurts and wounds and pain and disappointment and fear. This is what Joshua is helping the whole congregation. Amen. The word, okay, the word, the things that we as pastor cannot do, but the word can do. We as a counselor, we can say, we counsel until the cow come home. <laughs> this person is still having the problem. All right. But the word in the person is actually powerful because it's fully charged and it will function. Amen. So many of us Christians are not fully charged. It's half charged. You know, or it's empty already, very tired, very low yeah, in power. And so this is what God told Joshua. First, he encouraged him, do not fear. When God sp speaks to you, uh, I tell you, it's a rhema word. Say together, rhema words. Right? I have students I minister to. I will let them to deal with some of their stronghold, the root lines, R-O-O-T-L-I-E-S, since childhood. They've been telling by the adult and also their failure. You are not good enough. You are hopeless. You are helpless. You ask any one of us here. Somehow you have one of this area. The Lord said, deal with this. This is a lie from the devil and a stronghold in your mind. If you don't deal with it, right, it will attract more problems and same type of people and hurts you. And then you wonder why. Then again, if uh, enforced, I am not good enough. I am truly not good enough. So a lot of people, yeah, from different education background, somehow they have this in their life. So praise the Lord when you remove it, right? When you allow Jesus, so I will let the student, I say, I don't counsel you. I don't tell you what to do. You hear from Jesus. Yeah, tell your neighbor, hear from Jesus. That is the most powerful counseling. I can say a thousand words, but they might not be able to do it. But when Jesus speak to them, like God spoke to Joshua, he said, be strong and be courageous. It's a rhema words. When the rhema words come to you, because you have been told by the devil all the lies in your life, so we need to go back to the source of truth, that is Jesus. So I will do that yeah, during the course of that prayer. That is the last part, to remove the root. One, they hear it from Jesus. Huh? Some of them say, oh, the Lord told me, uh, he said, do not be afraid. You know, I will take care of everything. Yeah, some of them are very hurt in their marriage, right? They say, Pastor, I went through this course, I prayed and I feel so liberated. You know, so liberty, you know, so liberated, you know. But what happened, Pastor, if I go home, my husband will scold me, you know. <laughs> okay, it's realistic, right? You have changed, but the other people in the office, they never change, right? But lo and hold, surprisingly, when we change and heal, they also will change. Guarantee. 100% uh, guarantee got money back one. I have seen it happen. Okay, some of them say, oh, pastor, I feel good now, you know. And I say, and then go back, uh, the, the husband or children scold them again. Right? I say, not yet, Santa. <laughs> you haven't really go deep, right? But very interesting. I've seen those who sincerely heal and liberated. They cry, you know, they saw Jesus. They feel the touch. Uh, when they go home, uh, whoever that hurts them uh, will become their friend. Very interesting. This is what I experienced. That, that God can do that. Your enemy will become your friend. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I tell you, you know, is if someone who are very high ranking and very important person, if they hurt you, if they cheat you and anything, 
you go to the prayer because you already have a tie with the person, but it's not healthy. Right? So when you're healthy, the ungodly tie is broken and you yourself initiating and they can sense you are being healed. Because when they hurt you, uh, they know. Tell your neighbor, when you hurt me, you know, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, they know, right? And we see face to face, uh, you just feel not nice, uh, then we put on a mask. La, uh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are good in doing that, but we have to go on. Uh, right? But you're constantly having struggle with the person, so you need to pray for healing. So Joshua has fear. He has seen this happen to Moses, okay, being bullied by yeah, God's people. So he has this fear, you know, and the Lord's words speak to him. Right? But it's not enough. He said, must meditate on the word of God day and night. Okay? I will come to that later. Okay? And, uh, all right. So now, actually, God is shaking heaven and earth. Every country. Yeah? Taiwan is also now going to one by one, you know. All right? Uh, uh, where is this place now keep flooding? Supposed to be a desert. Dubai. Yeah, Dubai, you know. This, this, can, this uh, city uh, is not planned uh, with the rain and all this drainage system. Uh. They thought they are not going to experience that. But now uh, the rain, like the whole year rain in one day all come down. It's really a shaking. So uh, no government, uh, no king or anything that cannot be shaken by our God. Amen. He just do it. All right? So pray, pray okay, that God will shake all right? and so their hearts will be humble and they will be open amen and so he is a consuming fire so god is also yeah uh, you know cleansing the church right joshua is also calling them for consecration right yesterday i was teaching in the bible school in dumc you know and uh, they talk about this process of sanctification can you say it together sanctification Sanctification is a process of, uh, you know, cleansing. It's a process. It's not overnight. All right? So, for us Christians, uh, you, you were not going to be perfect overnight. You have, you know, your uh, challenges and problems. But, you know, but you are growing and becoming more and more like Jesus. That is a very important thing. Amen? Yeah? And so, uh, they need to go through cleansing. All right? So, uh, Joshua 3 5, okay? Yeah, as we uh, look at the Joshua 3 5, he says, uh, together we say, we read, and Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourself for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priest, and saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and cross over before the people. I felt these words are uh, a lot of uh, uh, meaning. You know, and precious stone inside. Huh? You see, the cleansing, sanctify yourself. Right? Can you say together, yourself? That means you yourself have to recognize it. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the condition is that if you, we, do it, recognize it, acknowledge it, all right? And then the cleansing will come. And I tell you, the cleansing come, the healing will come. Tell a neighbor, when the cleansing come, the healing will come. A lot of our sicknesses, as I mentioned, I always emphasize this. When you want to be healthy, okay? Yeah, eating healthy is important, of course. Amen. This is what God wants to us to obey. There is a natural law we have to obey. Yeah, when you go against the natural law, you hurt yourself. There is a gravity. Yeah, you don't jump down from 15 floor. You thought everyone can fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you take air Asia, yes. Okay, yeah. Well, so, you know, and of course, there is a, a spiritual law. And also, the Lord said the emotional law as well, I believe. Okay, He said, a merry heart do like a medicine. So, your heart condition, your emotion, when it's healthy, then your physical body will be healthy. So, very important. I've seen many of us from the good one and the bad one. Right? I just want to share something very, I feel very disappointed. 
I have a good friend. We serve together, right? We are no longer in the same church, right? And I observe he's a very talented person, a Chinese who can teach Malay literature. <laughs> God is raising up people. Like, and I know he has a call. I know he has a call. And he is not yielding it to the Lord. All right? And they are very they are they earn very well, they travel, yeah, and so on. Yeah, they teach in the university, right? But I observe he has something, a problem in his life. He is playing computer games. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you play computer game? Uh, you play Mario? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but he's not playing that, no. He's playing all the strategy game and all, and internationally connected. He has a lot. He prays very intensely, but he works very hard, and he do well, and he, he, he is like effective, all right? But he has this thing he didn't deal with. And we thought, right, he is a, is a leader in the church, all right? But one day when we have meeting, uh, he got upset with some decision. Oh, he banged the table. Oh, I, we, everybody is so shocked, you know. We're all very nice people, right? But sometimes he lost control, you know, so angry. Why, why, why are you so angry? Come down, come down, you know. If you not agree, never mind, we can talk, you know. But you cannot settle. So it's something, a lot of things uh, is brewing inside. Yeah. So when we com play computer game, uh, uh, you actually have more stress. But because you have stress, uh, you play computer game. <laughs> Three more. Yeah. Like you have stress because you eat. La. eat la. That's another way of expression uh, and dealing with it. Right? Or you're stressed or uh, watch Korean movie. La. <laughs> you know, uh, identify with how you feel. You know. But it's so, it cannot heal your soul. All this cannot heal your soul. Right? Okay. All these things, Right? But you have to deal with it. So he didn't deal with it. And so one day his condo, condo on fire. One of the units. She was so scared. She started to ask my friend, <laughs> the wife, uh, cannot cook. Uh? No more cooking, no more stove, no more fire in the house. Wow, already extreme. This is fear. This is fear. Tell your neighbor, do you have fear? It can grow from small. And my, the wife told us he has a fear in him since childhood because there's once a fire happened in his old house. And he didn't settle that. He came to know the Lord, but this fear is still in him. Tell your neighbor, are you a new creation? Right, huh? You say we are a new creation. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, and we meditate and say, old thing has passed away, don't have to deal with it. Uh. But actually, you say, if you are in Christ, right? You have fear, you're not in Christ. Yeah, yes, you, you are walking with Christ, but when you have fear, when you have anger, you have hatred in you, you are no longer in Christ. And then one more added to it, say very clearly, old thing has not passed away. Ah, that day you say this thing to me, right? Or what, what, what. No, you still have this uh, hurts and pain. So the old thing, you have to deal with it and give it to the Lord. Yeah, your heart is broken. Your heart is shaken. You need to deal with it. So he did deal with it. So since then, you know, poor wife uh, cannot cook, always eat outside. Of course, la, all of us got different what ma oh. Yeah. So so ended up wow, just lately tested. Okay, kidney uh, got growth already. Kidney got the tumor. Check some more, cancerous. The kidney, one of them, had to remove. Please tell me, just yesterday, I was with MDS, Dr. Jason, the, yeah, the, the uh, principal, was showing up. How can emotion affect our health? I said, thank you for doing all the, uh, the research I can use. Uh. I said, yeah, I can, can, can use it. So one of the things, I'll go back and look. He said, he looked, he, he took the kidney, then the word say, fear. Oh, it's just like speaking, you know, to me, right? Because of fear, maybe the adrenaline rush, you know, overdose or whatever, constantly under fear. And now he has to go. He is a person with a calling, with the talents, right? So tell your neighbor, don't waste your life. Give your life to Jesus. Yeah, you will be healthy, I tell you. 
And I always ask the student, don't be so fast. Yes, if you want to cut, cut lah. I got insurance, can cut. <laughs> and then what else want to do? Chemo, okay, go chemo. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Kwan, no business after that. <laughs> Different business, okay? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, this is how, I always ask the student, so that student, I ask her, don't go for the, you know, treatment first. One of the students having cancer. So, you know, I call her, I say, how come you haven't signed out? I say, person, wait, uh, I'm now in the uh, doctor clinic. They just diagnosed me with cancer. Wow, I said, I said, this is that. So thank God. They asked for prayer support. She's not, you know, some people got problem, uh, just, you know, cover it, don't let people know what, no. Right? We are the body of Christ. Amen. Right? We need to pray for one another. Right? We need to be transparent. So the corporate prayer has a power. Praise the Lord. After the second uh, checkup, uh, clear the tumor, gone. Let's give Jesus a clap. So remember, you have brother and sister, your family with you. Trust one another. Despite sometimes you are not able to trust, uh, you must know you need the corporate prayer. So when you have prayer, don't suffer yourself. Okay? Sometimes we say, how come I never see you so long? You, know? you say, I was in the hospital. I say, how come we don't know one? You know? We want to pray with you, ma. Right? We are family. Uh. Amen. So, yeah, Seremban Life Assembly is a family. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, the cleansing and the word. Okay? Yeah. And then, and the presence of God can say together, the presence of God, the act. You can see? Cleansing. Close every door. Close every legal ground. Say together, close every door. Every legal ground. Right? That is repentance, prayer of repentance. You close the door and the enemy cannot attack you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, now, you are not lacking the word of God. Okay? The blood of Jesus cleanses us. Right? Revelation. Overcome him with the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your testimony must be in line with the word of God. So, meditating on this word <coughs> and then the next thing the ark of the covenant amen the presence the worship is important amen all right so in second corinthians 7 1 all right let's read together one two go therefore having all these promises beloved <coughs> let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Amen. So when everyone read the word of God, okay, we cannot instill fear of God upon people. Alright? We need to read the word of God and we have encounter with God, you know, then the fear of the Lord will be with us. And when we have the fear of the Lord, we respect the leader, the one who lead us, Joshua. And so when he called, you know, whatever he asked them to do, go around seven days, seven, you know, seven times, you know, at the last day, everybody follow, even though they can be humiliated, but they trust the leader. Can we say together, trust God, trust the word, trust the leader. So if everybody do that, we are all trustworthy, we can trust. And everybody, <coughs> none of them left behind or cross over. Amen. So this is unity, and we are going to have see this happen in the church, okay? Yeah, in the Saramban churches as well. And so as we are being healed, we cleanse ourselves, we will humble ourselves. Our enemy, our competitor will be our friends and our co-worker. Amen. Hallelujah. Then you can see the unity will come, all right? And so we thank God, okay, and uh, the power of the word, eh? okay? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's read Hebrew. For the word of the Lord is living and powerful. Yeah, okay. And sharper than any two edged sword, and piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit, and of joy and marrow. Yeah, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
And this is a very powerful word. At first, when we read this, uh, first few times, you know, I'm a young Christian, I couldn't get it, but as I involved in ministry and praying for healing of the soul, can we say together, healing of the soul, right? So uh, I will not bore you. I've been doing this with you, you know, for the camp and so on, right? The healing of the soul is so important, right? We thought the spirit is important, of course. But many times when your spirit is, with your soul yeah, is clouded and wounded, it affects your spirit and your action your words and your thoughts, all this, you know, you are affected, you cannot sleep and so on, okay? So sometimes we have wounded soul and areas that is suppressed, you cannot identify, right? I ask some, you know, if you, I ask this question, is this happened to you, something you need to search? I ask some of my students, they tell me, they say, Pastor, I cannot remember my childhood. I cannot remember my primary school. Who is my friend? Who is my teacher? But I can remember who is my teacher, who is my classmate, what do we do during recess, you know? Yeah? Because I have a happy childhood. Thank God for that. All right? So when you are happy with your childhood, you remember them. When you are not happy with something, you try to forget about them. But do you think you can forget them? Yes, look like you can, but it's in your subconscious. It's there. That makes you cannot sleep. You know, you have unresolved relationship, unresolved trauma in your life, and re unresolved uh, abuses in your life before. You don't deal with it, it will be still there until you are 90 years old. This is what happened to my friend. He, has, he is a church leader. When you are in a Bible study with him, uh, you cannot outspeak him, uh, you know. He knows <laughs> everything about the Bible. But his life, the soul, Tell your neighbor, your soul is so important. Out of your soul, that come the issue of life. And he said in First John, he said, you know, I wish that you will prosper as your soul prosper. Amen. So, you know, we need to cleanse this. And the Lord said he wants to preserve us blameless, our body, soul, and spirit at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, the word of God, when you are soaking in the word, uh, can you say together, soaking in the word, is another word, so it's actually meditate on the word day and night. I wonder how, you know, Joshua can do that, right? But I believe that he has the words uh, in him, is fully charged. The battery is fully charged with the word of God. Remember this word, you always charge your battery, <laughs> your battery. Your, your phone battery and always remember charge it with the word of God and I thank God some of the people when they do that right the word of God is like a double edged sword <coughs> they will cut through bone and marrow I do not know you know scientifically this is something you can do or what but it's an illustration that is so closely needed and being influenced sometimes it's not good right the soul it's affecting the spirit and the whole being. Like this friend of mine, the fear is affecting his whole life. Right? He's only 40 plus, you know. And we have many friends just died like this at a very young age. So it says something. The Lord is speaking to us. Right? The Lord is cleansing his church. Amen. Because what is coming is more, more dangerous and challenging so clear our hearts huh? let's say together clear my heart he said the pure in heart will see God you will encounter God when your heart is so clouded <coughs> with all the wounds and all the fear I tell you many Christians cannot hear from God because of a clouded and wounded soul they even will misunderstand God right they get angry and upset with God and so when you read the word the word will do okay the words of conviction the work of condition he will cut through your soul and spirit say together cut through my soul and spirit okay he will pierce even to the division of soul and spirit what for 
okay? Because God is doing the work of cleansing, all right? He wants to separate your soul from affecting your spirit. And so when you do the Bible reading in big chapters and numbers, you're soaking in and it's actually is removing the, 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 all the filthiness in the hearts and soul and removing them, removing them. That is one way. Sometimes you don't even know what's wrong with your heart. What are the emotional stress and wounds in your childhood? Okay, I have some of them having depression, you know, they are well educated going into medical school halfway, depression just came in and entered into, into mental hospital. And we start praying for them. They come from a very well-to-do educated family background, right, serving the Lord. But how come have this problem? So tracing back all the way as we pray for them, that was the childhood things that happened. The, the guardian, the grandmother, uh, say together, grandmother, very important, <laughs> very important. She keep feeding her with the Japanese war and story every night before sleep. This is what she get. Yeah, so sad, right? So sometimes, yeah, parents are very important. They have no time, so the grandmother take care, and you do not know, right? So I'm not, yeah, uh, I'm not scolding, scolding the grandmother, <laughs> okay? I'm just saying, grandmother need to be healthy. <laughs> Say together, grandmother need to be healthy, yeah? amen? They are very good, they love the grandchildren, but what are they feeding? So, wow, as she do the word meditation, the Lord bring healing, amen? So I encourage you to do that, right? Afterwards, I'm going to uh, show, show you. Okay, and it is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Sometimes we can even deceive ourselves, all right? Like David, all right? Yeah, and so the word of God needs to come, all right? And so this is the Chinese word, very interesting, all right? Okay, faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. This is Ting, uh, uh, ting, tell your neighbor, ting, uh, you, so you learn one Chinese word, ting, here, ting, uh, very easy, right? right? Ting, uh, uh. so ting, this word uh, is a complete word, it's not a simply, uh, simplified version, so you have a year, you listen, right? Chinese words are very meaningful and very connected to the Bible one, all right? So Chinese Right? Uh, sorry, uh, there are Indian here also, right? but we have a calling, uh, everyone, every race has a calling. So the Chinese uh, has a calling one, you know, alright? So I just discovered during the pandemic, uh, okay? Do you know dragon? Is it bad? <laughs> In the Bible, the, the, the dragon is also the devil and also the, yeah, the serpents uh, of old, right? But dragon uh, is actually existed, I believe. Because you look at the Chinese zodiac, got how many of them? Twelve. All the animal, anim, uh, animal, okay. All the animals is all available, right? Except one, dragon. You understand? So actually, dragon existed, but the dragon has fallen. He's the angel of God. He's the archangel. All right. And then when. When then when you look at the words death D E A F Chinese, how do you write? A dragon on top and then the year beneath. The dragon block us from hearing the Lord. Sp spiritual, you know, death. Yeah. At the same time when you look at the words dragon. On top of a dragon, you put a covering. It is what? Favor. Favor, the words, enchong. Right? He is God's favor. The covering angel. But many of us, I also first came to know the Lord. When I go home, my mom served me dinner with a dragon. I said, I don't want this bowl. <laughs> so he said, my son, 
all my bow got dragon. <laughs> and then when we have dragon, we will tear them, we will cut them. Okay, it's okay to do, it's nothing wrong. All right? And so some mainline denomination, you say, hey, all this group of people, uh, they are very afraid of dragon man. You know? So actually, as I understand, China and Chinese uh, need to be redeemed by the Lord for his end time purpose. The God is, is going to ask the Chinese people bringing back the gospel uh, to Jerusalem. And the Chinese is known, but I don't like to declare that when I first came to know. Chinese is the descendant of dragon. <laughs> Scary, right? I say I don't want to be dancer of dragon, right? But there is a root there. Chinese uh, has a core. You look at the book of Genesis, the Ark, Chuan, Noah's Ark, they are there. When you look at righteousness, the lamb on top of me, there is a gospel within the Chinese writing, only the Chinese writing. And so, listen to the word of God. And this is another one. Your ear, attentive to the word of the king, on below the green color is the king the decree of the king and then is holy perfect all right you honor his word and the one go like this is actually if you are chinese is yan jing mu your eyes right and eat sing is wholeheartedly reading the word of god the decree of the king amen so i tell you you know and when you do that, all right, the stronghold within your life, right? I, I was ministering to this uh, MP. She just went home with the Lord, huh? yeah, Li Qi Xiang, yeah, the uh, where this uh, KKB, uh, uh, he loved the Lord. He just came to know the Lord, and uh, yeah, YB Teresa Kok brought her to the Lord. I thank God for YB Teresa. She's a very prayerful lady. <laughs> because she faced a lot of challenge to pray for her. She bring many of the MP to the Lord. No? So this one of them, she was having cancer and uh, we minister to her, pray with her. And every time I cannot go there, I will do my prayer and reading of the scripture and she will listen to it. The husband said, she keep listening and he said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Yeah. And so, you know, the entrance of God's words uh, will bring us light. Amen. And it will give us understanding to the simple. And so she agreed before she went home with the Lord. We baptized her in Subang Medical Center. And we praise the Lord. Uh, yeah. In, during the funeral, the Malay, the Chinese wearing tudung, you know, all come and appreciate what she did, her life. She loved people. She loved people. She will still ask, ask her husband, how is this girl that we are supporting her education? You know? Her heart is for people. So God really saved her. And so her impact, so praise the Lord. So we believe uh, something good. Well, God it will be continuing uh, working in KKB. And so the word, the reading, and the meditation is so important. Okay? Yeah. And another one, uh, let's read together. One, two, go. It's not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So if there's stronghold in you, and you continue to meditate on the words, huh, and the word uh, will come to us so powerfully, right, and to break away all the blind spot and stubbornness. So I have people who do the reading, right? They say they start to feel the pain all over the body, you know, Right? So this is actually a manifestation of the stress and all the things uh, are going out. And after that, you know, they begin to feel the, the healing. Right? So we, we thank God for the word. Right? He can do healing. He can break. You know, he can lead us. You know? And I thank God with that word's daily meditation. I just go about doing God's work. Uh, and whoever that I need to meet, uh, the Lord will just divinely and they will just join with me. For example, today, uh, 
Pastor Catherine is just last yesterday night say, Pastor, I want to come along. Li Ting also, yeah, just uh, Friday meet up. All right, and, and so actually God bring the people coming together for a purpose. All right, so someone actually want to meet me, but they have very short time. The son they want to he want to leave for Australia, right? And he's not well. And one day I was having a meal, and then I saw someone waving at me. Wow! I say, wow! Tomorrow you're going back, right? Today we meet straight away. We stand there and we pray. I release word, you know, to bless him, you know. And so this is the divine appointment. Can you say together, divine appointment? So I'm going to stop here, but I want to encourage you, uh, crossing over. God is wanting us, the church, uh, especially those who call and obey Him. We are moving into another level. It's the supernatural level. Yeah, we've got to experience that. And so, you know, I thank God. Uh, I, I will, you know, the Lord will send things and want me to listen and hear. And uh, for me, very interestingly, I meditate the word, you know, every day. All right. And when I wake up, uh, the Lord will bring the pieces, the people I met, and so on and so forth. And He will, he will teach me a lesson. He, he will tell me what He's trying to tell me. All right. And so one day I was driving uh, to a church in Ampang and I was short of time a pastor want to meet me and pray with me before I go to preach and so I say God you know I heard about redeeming the time okay yeah that you can redeem our time because you are the same yesterday today and forever okay so when I pray with the student time that is past they are wounded and abused uh, we ask Jesus to bring us back to that time and do the healing and it works, right? Because he is not bound by time. We are. So when you hold his hand, even afterward, when you hold his hand, if you regret it, you say something, you do something, and someone was hurt, and even no longer here, and you feel the guilt and the shame, I want you to release yourself. And I want you to go back with Jesus and hold his hand and ask him to redeem whatever that is broken and heal the relationship, heal your heart, right? He can do that. So I say, God, you can redeem my time. I ask for time, right? So if I say, uh, Dr. Kwan, I'm late 15 minutes, so I stretch his time, right? He has to wait for me 15 minutes. But do God don't work like that. He works in supernatural. That means he can help you to gain the time, and he don't lose the time. So I prayed, I forgot. I reached the church, uh, the, doctor, uh, the pastor shake my hand, and I said, we go into the room. And so the Tamil ministry is ongoing. And I said, so we just talk and finish picking and praying, and then, eh, the service is still on, not, the, not yet the English service, right? So I, I tell the people who do my projection, I say, I'm going to do and complete my PPT and send to you. I done everything, and then the service starts. Wow, I didn't even realize that until someone stood there and gave a testimony very similar to what happened to me. Then the suddenly the Lord reminded me and said, Lazarus, just how you pray a prayer, it's actually happened. So I thought I have no more time already, but I sat through, pray, and do everything. He tell me, he said, you've done everything you say you want to do, right? And the service, nobody affected Wow, I say I am actually moving yeah, in times, God's timing, and He can do that. All right? I experienced at least twice okay, this experience. So the Lord is actually telling us, uh, the things that I do, greater things you will do. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's all stand together. Hallelujah. And I want you, all right, to be meditating in His presence, okay? That something, okay, that happened in your life, right? Something that happened in your life that you wish you can rectify it, but it's already over, okay? And something in the past coming, okay? You want and you know it's a promise of God. You know it very well. The Lord has spoken to you, but it has not come to pass. Okay? And I want you to, to see with these eyes of Abraham. 
You know, God promised him your descendant will be like the sand. Okay? Yeah. And also, you know, yeah, the stars in the sky. So in the wilderness, uh, Abraham constantly uh, walk up and he see the star. And he see the sand. Okay? And so it's a reminder. And today I want you to not see the star or the sand <laughs> because there's no star here. Alright? But seeing what God has promised to you. Your desire, maybe for Malaysia, maybe for your people. And this is God's desire for Suramban. I know Suramban must be won by the love of Jesus. Alright? And that's why you are here. So you, I want you to see with God's promise and His eyes and your love and passion for this land, you know. <laughs> Every time I come to Seremban, huh, I go to Pasa Pasa <laughs> uh, to eat the noodle, you know, and all this. I feel it's very local. Yeah, the Chinese and yeah, the life, you know. So we love the people. So same thing, we want to love them uh, to know the Lord. Amen. And the people, you feel so tough to deal with them. Maybe as a mother or grandmother, you have made mistakes or whatever. But with your heart turning to Him, you know, and ask for healing for yourself, they will be brought back to God's purposes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As you close your eyes, yeah, as the music play, Father, we just thank you. You give us all these things to enjoy. Your presence, the worship, redeemed for your purpose. And our people around us, the one that I've seen in my younger day in ministry is faithful. And we saw it's the grace and the hands of God upon every one of your life. Think about the person who has left the church with disappointment, with misunderstanding. We are not ashamed of all this. It's family. But we yearn for them not to be lost. Amen. And so, as you close your eyes, as you allow Jesus, sometimes in all these mountainous, uh, you know, burdens in your hearts, uh, as you are also working in the circular, when you look at the student, you look at the people who do not know God, you really thank God you come to know the Lord. But how about them? So pray that God, you open the door. You open the door. You open the way. You will make a way in the wilderness, in the dry and thirsty land. There will be rivers of life flowing. Let it flow. Yes, do you know that the Holy Spirit is in you? Maybe you just felt uh, so condemned sometimes. You just felt you, let, you fail at some time. But no, you are making in the image of God. In His image, He make male and female, father and mother. You are precious. You are the apple of His life. Let His love fill your hearts and remove all fears from you. Let His love so fill your hearts. Yes, the perfect love will cast away all fear. Is there a fear of future? Is there a fear how you may die? <laughs> how you may grow old? How will your financial be like? How will be the ministry? How will be those who will be taking over the successors? Our younger generation, are they healthy enough? Are they strong enough? This is some of the worries of the father, yes, of the mother. Yes, Lord, we just commit all this thing. You are good. You are good. Forever good. Oh, we worship you. Lord, I just pray for your blessing upon Suramban life, Lord. Lord, yes, for the labor, for your love, Father God, for your grace, O oh Lord, that's brought them, 
Lord, and begin a good work in them. For every ministry that we have put our hands and labor, for every children we have spent our time and effort to raise them up. Maybe we do not do very well. Maybe you do not have a very good father and mother. But today, yeah, Jesus is the one who knows everything that happened to your father and mother. That how many of them too have never really experienced a true father and mother's love. Even from the very beginning, Genesis, Adam and Eve failed. How painful is their heart to see you know, Cain kill Abel. And this is the world. But you can make the difference because Jesus said, I come to heal the broken heart. You are my hands, my sons and my daughter. You are my feet that will bring the good news of peace. And Lord, I just want to pray right now. Allow Jesus to hold your hand first. Yeah, we want to say, it is well with my soul. So we just pray for every soul here that is so precious. I pray right now, you hold our hands in Jesus' name and give to Him all the disappointment, all the wounds, all the hurts and all the pain. Yes, and forgive the person who brings this to you. Yeah, whether it's a person, uh, someone very close to you, or a leader, or a, a church even, or a country, a nation, you need to forgive. Release. Forgive. Say together, forgive. I release and I bless the person. Yes, and begin to give to Jesus your pain, your hurts, and your suffering. Don't forget about your soul. The condition of your soul is very important. So clear this heart and this soul and remember, read the word of God. Because the word will bring to light any hidden thing, anything, any toxin, any rubbish that is in your heart, in your soul, that need to be constantly removed so that you know what is the perfect will and good perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Even right now, I just sense the Lord. Yeah, He's holding your hand. Yes, even when we were worshipping just now, yeah, I saw Jesus walking in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shikara baraka shandara baraka sikiri andara Kiri andara bara se 